The Invisible Band was one of these records because like it came out 21 years ago. 21? 21 years ago. And um, so I've got hair in my mouth. <laughs> Normal hair. <laughs> um, it came out 21 years ago and it came out at a time in this country where all you guys had was like there was like Limp Biscuit on one side, and the Spears on the other side, and there was nothing in between. There was no pitchfork, there was no fucking nothing. It was just like a bunch of shit. And then, Travis, this album was like this little island that we all crawled onto. And like, <laughs> Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. So, in this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Travis concert that I saw last night at the Fillmore. So I go way back with this band. Uh, when their first album came out, I want to say 1997, I bought it and it was good. It had, a, it had a lot of good songs on it. I saw them open up for Oasis in Berkeley in the year 2000, but earlier that day before the show, they, they did a free acoustic show in a little tiny record store I just happened to stumble across. I saw a flyer in the window and so I went and it was so good. They were so nice, so awesome. And they blew me away at the show and I became a fan and the their album, The Man Who, to this day is still one of my favorite albums of all time. I actually saw them at the Fillmore uh, in the year 2000 and I showed up right when they were coming out of their bus and Fran, the singer, he's the nicest rock star I've ever met. He came right up to me, stuck his hand out, shook my hand and said, it's very nice to meet you. I was like, oh wow man, you too. And you know, I got to meet the, the band again. Uh, so I've met them twice and I've been a fan ever since, back in 2000. Now I can't confirm this, but when I was standing in line at the Fillmore, there was a lady in front of me, she was talking to her friend. She said there was a, another fan who got mugged earlier that day and her purse got stolen and she didn't have any money. And she ended up telling Fran that. And he said, oh my gosh. So he, he opened up his wallet and he, he only had $40 in cash. He's like, here's $40, that's all I have. I hope it helps. Now, it seems like something he would do, but again, I can't confirm it. I just heard it secondhand, but how cool is that? But anyway, um, so opening up was Ben Otwell from the band Gomez. Here we go. It was time for Travis to take the stage. There was like a electricity in the air. You know, everyone was really excited. It's been a long time since I've seen them. So I was so happy when the lights went out.
that was sing, right? So, you know, you just gotta think this this uh, this show is like, uh, you're getting two shows tonight, right? So, it's like the first the first part of the show is, this is the first part of the show. We've just started it, we've been up right now. And um, it's like, imagine you've got the vinyl, and you just put it on in your living room, and you just put the needle on the record, and your living room door opens up and we sort of walk in. With our guitars, and you're like, shit, the neighbors are really good. Cool. So this is really good. Um, so that's kind of what it's like. It's like a time machine. We've got, like, all of these songs mean so much to me and the band. And I'm sure a lot of these songs are time. And so it's, just so, it's, it's quite, uh, for me, especially being here, you know, it's, it's quite an emotional thing. So uh, enjoy the show. So we'll move off in the back and we'll play some hits, but let's enjoy the invisible world. <laughs> Travis went away and 
your country's going fucking crazy. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Because hey, we're back to save you.
Yeah, time. Time is mental. Like it, it really is because you, it does get this, right? And also, it sort of does, you know, because it gets us, you know, you catch the bus at that time, you come to the gig at this time, um, and, uh, but it doesn't really. Um, this next song is about, I guess it's about, It's about a moment where you don't uh, you don't want it to stop. You want to just uh, if you could just pause it forever and just stay in that moment forever. But it's also about not wanting to die. You know, it's like I'm fifth, not forty nine. I'm uh, not squeezing every last month out of this forty nine year. <laughs> but you know, you start to think about things like that. You know, because like people around you start like you know. Anyway, this is uh, in the background. This, this is called the Death. <laughs> so we've come to the end of the Invisible Park. This is the final song, and I want to dedicate it to keep the, the sort of the, this idea going from the last song. Um, I lost exactly, almost exactly a year ago, one of my best friends. He's 50, he was 50. I mean, he went like that, really, really fast, cancer. And um, he was a guy, he, you'll be familiar with uh, a few of our videos, you know the press-up video where I'm doing the press-ups? He, di he directed that, that's when we met. He also made the, the egg video for coming around. This guy was like, fucking genius. Like, and that's, that's like nothing, he just threw that off like, <laughs> He's like one of the most coolest ever people. And so on this next song, the last song of this, um, oh, and the whole thing about this song is, it's called the Humpty Dumpty yeah. Love Song. Yeah. And I was always trying to figure out, like, what the fuck is this song about? <laughs> I mean, I wrote it the day we made the video with the egg in it. Because, you know, he's, he was like, oh, you, you're going to be Humpty Dumpty. And I was like, yeah. So, <laughs> and, uh, and so uh, I went back and wrote this thing. I never really figured out what it was until I lost it last year. And, uh, so. I want everyone in the room, just on this very last song, just think about someone that you want, that you love. Okay? Just have them, have them in your mind, have them in your mind, and, 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 and think about them. Uh, this is called the Hunt. to a certain song called Wonder Woman. So we all know the chords. Yeah. So, uh, because no, no one was always saying how he would steal everyone's chords. You know, because he did the T-Rex. Right, okay, you just stole that. He steals your hand. <laughs> in my unemployed state, without a record deal, in the coldest part in Glasgow, I thought, I'm going to steal this part of course. But just in case, just in case he, I ever meet him, look, imagine this, like, he's doing like, the biggest fan in the world at this point, and I'm in this, like, flat. Just in case, though, I'm going to put a little line in it so that if he hears it, he'll be like, I'll know that he knows that I know the <laughs> Cut to two years later, and we're on two of the races. And no one, like, every night, no one would be standing at the side of the stage like that. <laughs> and one night he came off, and he, he just does a pass to me, he's like, Nice fucking cards, mate. <laughs>
Just wanted to take a quick look at the set list. So of course they played the whole Invisible Band album to start out with. So many good songs. Love that album. Then they moved on to other songs from their career. And the encore was U16 Girls and Back in Black. So they've never disappointed me live and I can't imagine them ever doing that. And it was a great night of music. I had such a good time. It was worth all the pain in my feet from standing for hours and hours. I'd do it all over again. And let's see, there's a little bit more of the show left. So I just wanted to say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And here's a little bit more of the show. Thank you. 